வணக்கம் ஆஃப்டர் வி ஹவ் லேர்ன்ட் த டெக்னிக் ஆஃப் டூயிங் அன் எப்பினியூரல் ரிப்பேர் ஆஃப் அன் இன்ஜர்ட் நர்வ் வி ஆர் ஸ்டில் நாட் ரெடி டு டூ த சர்ஜரி ஆன் அ பேஷண்ட் தெர் இஸ் ஒன் மோர் ஸ்டெப் டு பி டன் டு மாஸ்டர் திஸ் டெக்னிக் தட் இஸ் சிமுலேஷன் சர்ஜரி இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி டிஸ்கிரைப் அ வெரி சிம்பிள் சிமுலேஷன் மாடல் ஃபார் ப்ராக்டிசிங் நர்வ் ரிப்பேர் இட் கன்சிஸ்ட் ஆஃப் ஃபோர் பார்ட்ஸ் த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் பார்ட் இஸ் த டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் ஆஃப் த இன்ஸ்ட்ருமெண்ட்ஸ் ரிக்வயர்ட் will be a self retaining retractor in the form of a bended clip the second part consists of description of the suture material that is going to be used in the nerve repair if you note the size of the suture material there are two measurements one is 80 and one is 0.4 metric the third part is the method of preparation of the simulated nerve dissect the muscles that are under this groove and you will immediately note the femoral nerve first which is lies most medial and the fourth part is the actual method of epineural repair take a stitch on the epineurium that lies directly over the fascicle this will avoid to a certain extent rotation of the fascicle as you take a bite first we'll be seeing the instruments that we'll be using for today's dissection the first is the toothed thumb forceps the second is the dissecting scissors curved the next will be a self retaining retractor in the form of a bended clip which can be retracted by using a rubber band and a pin that has been provided to you next is the background material now we'll come to the micro instruments that we are going to be using the first is the jeweler's forceps with which to hold the epineurium while taking the stitch the second is the needle holder and the third is the micro scissors which will be used for cutting the suture and of course we'll be using the number 11 size blade for cutting the nerve sharply the number 11 size blade has got a longer cutting edge which is why it is preferred to the number 15 size blade the suture material that we'll be using has also been provided i'll be talking to you about that soon for this practice session we'll be using 80 or 90 polyamide suture we'll be discussing more about the aspects of this needle first is the 38 cm that you see there which refers to the length of the suture material describing the needle it says 6 mm which refers to the length of the needle the 3/8 circle refers to the circle of which the curvature of this needle forms a part the round body it refers to the cross section of the needle which is round here in this situation as opposed to cutting or reverse cutting the cutting where the sharp edge is on the concave side and the reverse cutting where the sharp edge is on the convex side the micro point refers to the tip of the needle from a rounded shape it becomes a tip immediately that is the micro point needle as opposed to what is known as a spatulated needle where it is going to be flatter and that will not be ideal for a microvascular repair as the hole that is made by the needle will be larger than the size of the suture material the 150 microns refers to the thickness of the needle nowadays you have got much thinner needles to the tune of 75 to 100 microns too if you note the size of the suture material there are two measurements one is 80 and one is 0.4 metric the 0.4 metric refers 
to the European pharmacopoeia measurement which is a decimal that is 0.4 metric means 0 0.04 millimeters whereas the 80 that you see is, is under the US pharmacopoeia or the USP. This refers to one eighth of a millimeter. In the chicken lower limb specimen that has been given to you, there are two, two portions. One is the thigh portion and the leg portion. On the thigh portion, you will need you will note a muscle on the medial most aspect and a group of muscles on the lateral aspect and a groove between the two. In this group is where lies the femoral nerve and the femoral artery for the chicken leg. Retract gently the lateral muscle which is otherwise called flexor cruris lateralis. The medial muscle is called the iliofibularis. Dissect the muscles that are under this groove and you will immediately note the femoral nerve first which lies most medial. Lateral to that you will find the femoral artery and even more laterally you will find the femoral vein. Use the self retaining retractor to retract the lateral muscle. Now that the coarse dissection is over, the femoral nerve has been identified, the femoral artery has been identified and the femoral vein which is much more lateral has been identified. This will be the site of the transaction of the nerve for preparing for the microneural repair. First apply the background material, cut quite narrow to avoid tenting of the nerve. Just before transecting the nerve, give a little traction on the nerve by extending the knee joint of the chicken leg. Now using the leaven blade, try to make a sharp cut in the nerve. As you make the cut, you will note that the ends of the nerve, cut nerve, retract and the fascicles of the nerve pout out through the cut end of the nerve. The entire exercise of microneural suturing aims at converting this into this. The reason why the fascicles tend to pout out through the cut end of the nerve is because the elasticity of the epineurium is more than the elasticity of the perineurium that covers the fascicles. The epineurium is, con is composed mainly of type 1 collagen which is more elastic rather than the type 3 collagen which is more a constituent of the perineurium. We are planning to practice the epineurial suturing technique today. The aim of this technique is to take a stitch and approximate the epineurium of both ends of the nerve after coapting the fascicles and if possible you can see the vessel running on the nerve in real life situation which can be coapted. Now there are three techniques of taking a bite in the epineurium without harming the fascicle underneath. The first is to hold the epineurium by using its elastic property and everting it and taking a bite without injuring the fascicle. The second is if there is a mesoneurium available that can be used or the third technique is to take the bite in the epineurium by holding on to the previously applied stitch which can be used as a traction suture. When you start off, take a stitch on the epineurium that lies directly over the fascicle. This will avoid to a certain extent rotation of the fascicle as you take a bite through the epineurium. First take a stitch on one side, go through the epineurium, come out, 
then take the stitch on the other side of the cut nerb. Tie the knot now making sure it is not under too much tension. The only the epineurium must be approximated. It is the difference in tension on the epineurium that causes a pouting of the fascicles. Some surgeons even advise that you do not tie the knots, just leave the threads long, put in all the sutures and then tie them one by one making sure that the tension is equal between all the knots. Now the end is cut, one end is cut close, the other suture, the other end is left a little long as I said to hold as a traction suture. Now we prepare for the second suture that is going to be applied. Using the previously cut suture as a traction suture, the next epineurial stitch can be taken. It is taken out through the cut end and before tying the knot, the excess length of the traction suture can be cut now before tying the knot on the second bite that we have taken in the epineurium. This is again tied making sure to retain the same tension as we had applied for the first suture. Now you will note one problem in that the fascicles will tend to pout through the other ends that have still not been sutured. There are two ways of dealing with it. If it is a very minimal pouting, the epineurium over the pouting the fascicle can be sutured, taking care to push the pouting fascicle inside. If the fascicle is too long, it needs to be trimmed. This trimming can be done before the epineurial suturing or after the stitch is put in, if it is still pouting through, that pouting end can be cut and the stump pushed into the epineural repair. The epineural repair can be continued on the rest of the cut end on the anterior aspect of the nerve. The question of how many sutures to put in arises, but the aim of microneural repair is to get approximation of the fascicles together using the epineural suturing. So the minimum number of sutures needed to achieve this opposition is all that is required. Here the lateral most portion on the anterior surface, the epineural repair is being done. Gentle technique is very important to achieve a good repair and good results following nerves microneural repair. When tying the knot, please remember to hold the suture material on the tip of the short edge. This will ensure that there is no looping of the suture within your knot and less amount of inflammation can be caused by putting in a neat suture. Now that the anterior portion of the cut nerve has been repaired, we need to evert the nerve for a suturing of the posterior side. For that, we grasp the lateral most suture with the needle holder and pull it medially and hold it in such a way that the posterior portion of the cut nerve is now exposed for repair. The repair can now be done as has been described for the anterior side. You will note that there is more pouting of the fascicles on the posterior side. This is because 
After repairing the anterior epineurium, all the fascicles are now pouting on the posterior aspect. This needs to be considered. It will be ideal even if you can do a posterior nerve repair first before going to the anterior side, then it will be much easier to deal with the protrusion of the fascicles. I am sure you can now see the pouting of the fascicle that is just close to the knot that I am taking over there. That has to be dealt with next by the technique that I have told you. That is you take a stitch on the epineurium and push the fascicle inside while doing so. The rest of the nerve is repaired as has already been elucidated. Successful results can be possible in peripheral nerve surgery from perfect technical concepts and understanding the technical concepts, understanding the biology of the nerve and understanding the process of wound healing in the nerve and good surgical instruments. Of course, patience and good practice will definitely go a long way in achieving good results in nerve suturing and nerve surgery. Thank you. I hope you liked the video. I enjoyed making it. Please click on the shown links to see more about methods of nerve repair and nerve grafting. And do not forget to subscribe to keep connected with the latest in learning hand surgery.